What's going on, everyone? Happy Sunday to everyone. Hopefully, everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy. If you had to take a COVID test, hopefully you have tested negative. If you did test positive, I hope you have a full and speedy recovery with no long COVID issues. It is time now for the Sunday edition of the Pandemic Update for Sunday, September 22nd, 2024. I know, where's time going? It's almost the end of September already, but here we are. We are still in a COVID pandemic. If you're new to my channel, welcome to my channel. This is where I do the daily pandemic on all things COVID and any other virus that could be a health threat to you. Today's main focus, where we will spend a majority of this video on, is viruses in wastewater, including COVID and, of course, other viruses as well. But we will talk about one or two news stories first. So if you're new to my channel, subscribe to my channel down below, give this video a thumbs up, hit that notification bell, share this video with anyone you know, and of course, leave your comments down below. All right, don't have a lot of news today, but I do have a few things to show you before we get to viruses in wastewater. And starting off with this, with a sports report, John Rahm, who is a professional golfer, used to be on a PGA Tour, and now he's on Live Golf uh, Team Championship this weekend. Well, he had to withdraw from the Live Golf Tournament this weekend because he is dealing with illness, with flu-like symptoms on Saturday, and he couldn't continue on. They don't mention the word COVID. Could it be COVID? I suppose it's possible, but they don't mention the word COVID. All right, taking a look at this. Cold and flu season is just around the corner. In fact, I'm going to be showing you flu and RSV in wastewater today, and we may see a few wastewater sites that are rising. Well, this headline says, with cold and flu season here, it's time to start thinking about getting an updated COVID vaccine. It's also time to start thinking about getting that flu shot. And I've mentioned it a few times over the last few weeks. I think it's time you start taking that serious. And if you don't want to get a vaccine, hey, that is your personal choice. We live in a free country here in the United States. That's your choice really anywhere that you live around the world. But if you so should choose to want to get one, I think now is the time, at least for flu and maybe COVID as well, because as you know, we may be in a law where things are dropping in some places. Other places, it's still rising. Either way, everyone is going to rise again come the holidays. And of course, flu is going to impact everywhere as well. All right, moving on to this. Just a reminder. I do have a website. It's datareport.info. Having given a uh, shout out to it lately, but you can find a whole bunch of information there. You can find COVID studies. You can find out past people who have had COVID, past COVID outbreaks. You can find out, you know, sometimes news stories get posted there. I don't do it for every pandemic update anymore, but I do sometimes, like today, I don't think there'll be a thread. But I do sometimes post the news stories that were shared in a pandemic update. There's a section just for that. There's a whole bunch of things here. And there are other people that are actually starting to post on the site. So it is datareport.info for that. Heat-related illnesses. Yes, they're still a thing in the United States among several counties. Not as many as there were back during the peak of summer. By the way, today is the first day of fall. Welcome to fall, everyone. Hopefully uh, you start to endure some... Uh, or feel some cooler weather, and hopefully the heat is not as bad. But yes, there are still some heat-related illnesses here. I think we'll take a look at this for a few more weeks, and then we will retire it or put it to sleep until we get to next year. But we'll see. You never know. There could be some more heat. Taking a look at pollen levels for today, 24% of the country is in medium status, though we still do see some red in Texas all of Louisiana, portions of Mississippi, Arkansas, and portions of Oklahoma as well. Everywhere else in the United States is not doing terrible. What is terrible today is air quality. So there's a lot of places that are in yellow for today. Uh, locally, where I'm at here in southeast Pennsylvania, it was not bad earlier. It is starting to build just a little bit. It's still in a green color, but to the west, there is some yellow, some oranges. Look at this. Up around Toronto, Canada, there's some oranges and yellows there. Down in the south, I'm seeing some yellows and oranges. That's not good. And take a look at Los Angeles. We see a lot of oranges. Wildfires. They are still a thing on the west coast. And look at this. Oregon once again. Oh, my. I'm seeing oranges, reds, purples. Yeah, that is not a good thing. Also, let's take a look here in the Midwest. Well, the Midwest is kind of a mixed picture. 
for today. All right, moving on. Want to learn more about climate and weather? Climate data report is the place for that on X. We're going to be talking about a hurricane. Yes, there could potentially be a hurricane in the Gulf of Mexico. I just saw some of the new models just in, and they're fairly impressive. So if you're along the Gulf Coast, especially near the Florida Panhandle, please pay attention. This could be a serious system. Heavy rains, winds, uh, flooding, sur surge could be high, coastal flooding surge. So, yeah, keep an eye on that. All right, Philadelphia yesterday, another 846 EMS incidents. That is, once again, a very busy day. Let's do a live looking with Montgomery County. Not too busy in Montgomery County right now. There is one respiratory call. Chester County, oh my. There are quite a few calls here. Injured person, heart problems, sick person, seizures, falls, falls, heart problems again. Respiratory difficulty, sick person again, sick of pee, and EMS standby. I can also tell you, just before I started recording this video, up in Center County, Pennsylvania, I just had the their EMS dispatch, EMS and fire dispatch on, and I did just hear a call for someone who was diagnosed with COVID on Friday. That's the nice thing about listening to that county. They're not as busy as uh, like down here in Philadelphia, so you actually get all the full details of what the call is for. But sometimes they do get very busy, and it sounded like it was a busy stretch when I was listening to Center County just, just about 15 minutes ago. All right, moving on now. The viral activity level in Canada is moderate for COVID. Flu A is low, flu B is low, RSV is low at this time. All right, taking a look at some data from the CDC, the KP3 0.1.1 variant leads the way still at 52.7%, and it will for the foreseeable future. XEC or even MV.1 probably won't enter the picture on this map. Maybe maybe we'll see XEC pop up on here on Friday. If not, it'll be the following report. And either of those variants could go dominant. We're looking at a while before that happens. Maybe October, maybe early November is from what I'm hearing from all the variant experts, all the people, that's what they do. They study COVID variants, variants of other viruses. Uh, maybe we'll see that go dominant later in the fall. But right now, it is the KP3.1.1 variant at 52.7%. Then, falling way behind that at 12.2%, it's the KP2.3 variant. All right, epidemic status. It's growing once again in New Jersey. Yeah, New Jersey cases were rising this week, as were New York State for a little bit which uh, is probably why it's stable or uncertain. It wasn't a significant rise, but it's enough that it was noticeable. And should that continue, we may see that go back to likely growing once again. Washington. I don't know why you just not drop it in Washington, but you're back to likely growing again. Your cases have just been very stubborn to drop. And everywhere else is either stable, uncertain, likely declining, or declining, and very happy to see that Ohio, at least for cases, is declining. Hospitalizations did not stop rising yet. And then we do have Virginia, North Carolina, and South Carolina, which are declining. Texas is declining. Louisiana's declining. Arkansas. Then we do have portions of the plains, such as Nebraska, which is declining. Likely declining in Kansas. North Dakota is likely declining. You get the idea here. California is declining. Hawaii, Alaska, likely declining. Utah, portions of Nevada and Arizona are de likely declining at this time. And Idaho is also likely to decline. Then we do have some other states like Indiana, West Virginia, uh, Maryland. You're likely declining at this time as well. You get the idea. All right, moving on now to viruses in wastewater. And we'll start off here with BioBot. We're just going to take a look at something. We've saw this already earlier in the week, but if you didn't see it, here it is again. And the regional wastewater concentrations. We can see here, influenza A is not really rising yet. Influenza B is starting to rise slightly, and then we come down here to RSV, not rising here, but when we go to wastewater scan a little later, you'll see that there are some rises with it, and we do note here that uh, COVID-19 levels, they still remain elevated to high across much of the country. The West has dropped a lot, but the only trouble spot in the West still is Washington, which is being stubborn to drop at this time, and going back to influenza B real quickly, the South, I should mention, is where they are showing a rise at this time. We can see here on the national scale, RSV is not really rising yet, at least not from their numbers. But again, when we go to wastewater scan, you're going to see different 
uh, look at things. All right, taking a look now from the CDC, you see a lot of different colors on a map. Well, hey, we can take a look at COVID in wastewater on this map. That's right. There are a lot of wastewater sites now. Some wastewater sites do um, not reflect what's going on with people who have septic tanks. Like if you're in a more rural area or if you're in a mountainous area, there's not always going to be a sewage system. Like for example, there's a lot of uh, summer homes and camps up in the state of Maine along lakes. Those camps do not connect to a wastewater treatment facility. At least the majority of them don't. So therefore, we can't tell you what's going on in those levels. But if you see local levels rising from places that are connected, uh, that's a red flag then, because that means, okay, if the small amount that's being collected is rising, then everywhere else is likely rising around there as well. All right, we're just going to look at this map, you know, go region by region. But first off, i got to tell you what these colors mean. The gray sites, those are sites that are not reporting. New sites, they're in the white. There's 20 of them. Sometimes it's a site that's reappearing. Sometimes it is a new site. And by reappearing, I mean... It hasn't reported in a while. Sometimes these gray sites, when they do reappear, they show up white for a week. So there's 20 of them. 0 to 19% COVID detected. That's the dark blue. That means really low levels of COVID detection. There's still just 45 sites. And I should tell you this. Total sites with current data. That's 45 sites out of 1,323. Now, when we average these all together, the viral level for COVID, wastewater national activity level is still listed as high, but that is coming down. It is dropping. We hope that continues. We hope the little rise that's happening in the Northeast doesn't spread to more places or become so significant that it pushes that back up again. Right now, it's not doing that. All right, slightly more COVID detected. Zero to, or excuse me, 20 to 39 percent. And that is at 161 sites. Then we get up here to this really light shade of blue. It's the lightest shade on the map. 40 to 59% COVID detected. That is at 359 sites. And then orange. Now you're getting into moderate to high. 60 to 79%. That's at 469. 80 to 100%. That's red. Those are really high levels of COVID. And that is at 269. All right. Let's go region by region and see what's going on in the different regions. And we can see that in portions of New England, there are still some oranges and reds here, indicating that there are still some high levels of COVID. Uh, Vermont is still moderate to high at this time. New Hampshire, we're seeing a lot of red here. Look at this, Grafton. You see your level's still rising. And mind you, sometimes the CDC wastewater sites do lag, so take note of that. Uh, Massachusetts, there was a report that your cases went up this week, and, well... Rightfully so, your wastewater is still showing up red at this time. New York City, I can happily report that the majority of these sites are dropping at this time. You can see I'm just clicking on them here, and you do see drops. Uh, Staten Island is dropping as well. New Jersey, there's still some orange for you. Pennsylvania, still some orange. Even a few red sites in southeast Pennsylvania. Ohio still has a lot of orange and red, so things are going to need to drop more in Ohio. North Carolina at this time is still dealing with some orange and red, meaning you still have a high number of uh, COVID cases in your area. And also, this past week, you had a high number of COVID deaths, so that's not good. Florida, still some orange and red. And then we get out here to Oklahoma. Look at Oklahoma. There are a lot of gray sites, and the majority of sites that are reporting are showing up as red. So that is not good. Let's just click on some of these. And maybe it is these sites have not updated in a while. I honestly don't know. Like I said, sometimes there's lag. Here's Oklahoma City area. Yeah, take a look at this. Not good to see the red still. And take a look at St. Louis area. Still some red for you. Let's go up and take a look at Chicago now and see what's going on there. And I am still seeing some red. Uh-oh. Looks like Cook County is showing up in the red once again. Here's another Cook County site. These are all big wastewater sites. Over 1 million population. This one's dropping. And then there's another one that's in the light uh, blue. And that's showing rising as well. Again, 1,127,736 population. Let's see what coloring we're seeing up in Michigan. Still seeing some oranges and reds there. Minnesota, Wisconsin. Still some oranges, reds. A few light blue sites starting to show up. And Colorado. Still a lot of red and orange for you. Same with Utah. And then we get out to California. 
Yes, there are still some oranges and reds, but when we take a look at the Bay Area, we're starting to see a lot of those light blue sites, which indicates levels have come down. I mean, they're not back to low yet. They're still moderately elevated, but not as high as they have been. Taking a look at Oregon, you can see there's still a lot of red and orange, and well, as you know, Washington, state of Washington, is still being stubborn to drop here. And we take a look at some of these sites, you can see some of them, here's one, that's actually rising. We're down near the Seattle area, so yeah, take a look. Here's another one, though, 896,000 population, Pierce and King counties. This one is dropping at this time. You can see Wyoming, Montana, really not a lot of wastewater sites for you. And we do need to go down to Texas. You can see here, Texas, there's still some red and orange. And same with Louisiana, but we're starting to see some blue sites show up. That means your levels are dropping. And Alabama, you still have a lot of red and orange at this time. All right, let's take a look at wastewater scan. And we'll do the national level here first. You can see nationally at wastewater scan that the COVID is dropping at this time. RSV, take a look at this. RSV is rising slightly at this time. So that's something that we're concerned about. And uh, RSV and flu season, it's coming. Probably as we head into October, we're going to really start to see these levels take off. There was a wonky movement downward, but not terribly concerned about that because I think overall it's going to correct and probably continue to rise. Influenza A is starting to rise. Influenza B is slotted at this time. HMPV is low. Norovirus naturally has been starting to rise, and I think that's something we do need to continue to keep an eye on. And I've been noticing down in the south, there have been some wastewater sites that are rising for that. And matter of fact, let's take a look at the south now. And we can see here that uh, COVID is dropping. RSV continues to rise now in the south. It's evident you're at the start of the seasonal RSV wave. Influenza A actually dropped a little bit. That's good. Influenza B, not much of an issue. HMPV is low. Norovirus is low at this time. And everything else we don't usually look at. And let's take a look at a couple sites in the south now. Let's go down to Miami. This is where we have been seeing the biggest rise for RSV. COVID is actually back to low at this time. RSV was rising, but take a look at this. It has now dropped once again, which that is some good news to report. And we can see here HMPV, not much an issue. Uh, norovirus at this time. You're not really dropping that much, but you are at high levels. So that is concerning. And let's uh, make our way a little bit further to the north now. Let's go up to Atlanta, Georgia, and see what's going on there. How about we go up to Roswell, which is just north of Atlanta. And you can see here, COVID is low. RSV, influenza A, influenza B, not detected. HMPV, not much of an issue. Norovirus is now already up to medium levels. All right, let's go now to the West Coast. Then we'll go to the Midwest and the Northeast, and we'll call it a day. And we can see on the West Coast, COVID levels are dropping at this time. And RSV is rising at this time. Influenza A is relatively low, but there is a wonky movement upward. Eventually, that will trend up, but we're not seeing it yet. Influenza B is still low. HMPV, not much of an issue. And norovirus is rising at this time. Let's go to a big wastewater site. How about we go up to L.A., up near Hollywood? That sound good enough to you? Take a look at this. Actually, a little bit of a rise for COVID. Still in the medium levels at this time. RSV, influenza A, influenza B, HMPV, all not much of an issue. Norovirus is still low, and no MPOX detections at this time. Now let's go over to the Midwest, and we'll take a look at this. COVID levels were high, but we can see here, they're starting to drop. Not as fast as the wonky movement at the end, but they are really starting to drop, which is some good news. RSV is low, influenza A is low, influenza B does see a little bit of a rise, but it's still very low at this time. And HMPV is low. Norovirus was starting to rise, then it decided to drop, which is some good news. Now let's take a look at a wastewater site up here in the uh, Midwest. And we'll look at Warren, Michigan, and see what's going on there. You see COVID is still listed as high at this time, and it really hasn't dropped that much. It has dropped some from the very high levels that it was, but it needs to drop much more. And we know Michigan still reports high cases. RSV is low at this time. Influenza A is low. Influenza B is low. HMPV, not much of an issue. And norovirus is low at this time. Alrighty, moving on to our final region now, which will be the 
northeast region, and we'll see what the levels are there. COVID, look at this. It is dropping here in wastewater, despite the fact that there have been a couple states in the northeast that have seen increases for cases. RSV is relatively low at this time. Influenza A, it is starting to rise, as is influenza B, but influenza B is really, really low, not even as high as influenza A. HMPV is low, and norovirus is low at this time. Now, taking a look at, we'll look at one wastewater site, and how about we go up here to Boston, and mind you, we will take a look at more wastewater sites throughout the country during our pandemic updates during the week. We can see here that Boston wastewater is relatively low, just an ever so slight rise at this time. RSV, influenza A, influenza B, and HMPV are all low at this time, and we do notice that norovirus is in the medium category at this time, not rising just yet, and no detections of MPOX. Alrighty, folks, that does it for the Sunday edition of the Pandemic Update. We'll have another Pandemic Update again tomorrow. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, hit that notification bell, subscribe down below if you're new to my channel, share this video with anyone you know, and of course, leave your comments down below. I will see you all again next time. Until I see you again next time, stay safe everyone, and have a fantastic Sunday afternoon. Thanks for watching.